I seek refuge with Allah from the rejected shaitan. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. There is no power, no might, save in Allah, the most high. In all things I say, I am faithful to what Muhammad and his purified family have spoken. Peace be upon them. In that which they have kept secret, and in that which they have made known, and that which has reached me of them, and in that which is not, praised be Allah, the Lord of the worlds. May Allah's blessings be upon the Master of all creation. Our Master Muhammad and his purified progeny. May Allah's curses be upon their enemies and their killers until the hereafter. We pay our respects and condolences to our authority, the master of our time, Allah's greatest proof in this time Imam Mahdi from the purified progeny of uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. On this day, on this event, which is the day uh, of the martyrdom, uh, martyrdom of uh, his grandfather, the worshipper and the Imam Abu Ibrahim Musa ibn Ja'far, Al Kadim, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. And may Allah damn his enemies, killers, and those who abandoned him, and those who betrayed him. Uh, of the things that cause uh, widespread uh, misleading of people of this nation is uh, the following being deceived by a certain personality or personalities that it is uh, easily to see uh, them as uh, or see them in a positive manner uh, at first uh, at first sight uh, in terms of their acts and uh, such things people are deceived by these people and they see uh, that these uh, positive sides of these per, uh, individuals are enough to sanitize them and to also uh, overweigh their uh, negative sides. It's as if they are saying that the good that those individuals have committed uh, will overwhelm, uh, so to speak, the negative things that they have done or outshine them. Uh, or that the positive things about these people might lead uh, some people uh, to uh, adhere to these uh, individuals, to respect them more and uh, appreciate them and uh, disregard and forget the negative things. When we analyze these in the, uh, this um, situation and these individuals, we see that we uh, live in what we call uh, as multiple personalities. And some of the research, uh, researchers have went in that direction that the personalities of tyrants, uh, deviants, and the uh, unjust 
most of the time, they live a certain degree of having multiple personalities or a personality disorder. And it is often that these individuals uh, during their reign would depend on a principle of faith or religion to strengthen themselves. So for example, the title of Khalifa, which means successor, it's a, a religious title, a spiritual title. The principles and the foundations of such a claim uh, based on religion. So what to do in, in uh, to um, approve or strengthen their claim? So they must first uh, appear religious and strict. And on the other hand, they need to show themselves as those who fight and defend uh, the faith, they are, that they care about it very much, that his heart is attached to uh, religious truths, religi religious knowledge, uh, afraid or has fear in his heart of Allah, he, he must appear in that manner. But on the other hand, uh, he's after the dunya, the worldly life. He wants to be wealthy to spend all he can uh, to suffice or to feed his desires and also contradict religious rulings uh, against all those who uh, oppose him. So they step on every religious principle, ethical principle, to reach their uh, objective and uh, achieve their means. So why do we find some believe in these uh, people or individuals, follow them or even respect them uh, and uh, uh, have great uh, uh, passion towards them? The answer is uh, the shaitan uh, makes it so uh, people believe in this uh, or follow this uh, idea that no person is infallible everyone has guilt sins uh, doing good wipes away uh, the sins a modern example would be the regime of Al Saud it's a regime that is knee deep in uh, corruption. The princes of uh, Al Saud are known for their wicked uh, behavior, acts, and their corruption. But at the same time, there is a reason for the kings of this of this uh, regime, this family, to appear as the protectors of the faith the builders uh, of the symbols of faith, uh, caring about spreading the faith. Why are they uh, forced to uh, appear in, in such a manner? Because their principle is a religious one. The title of the king, for example, is a servant of the holy sites. So what is he supposed to do? He must uh, enlarge the two sacred uh, sites in uh, so-called Saudi, add to its uh, size, uh, do repairs, modernize it. Every king who comes, uh, he must uh, see that every person who comes to Hajj must receive a copy of the Quran with his, with his name on it. So it is said, those people, those kings, are serving the faith. And they have done that. They have done this. Uh, such and so of the kings, we see him in some moments uh, spreading, uh, spending his time worshipping Allah in seclusion until his tears come out of his eyes. Uh, out of fear and sincerity to Allah. And this image alone is enough for the feeble-minded, 
to see this individual uh, simply because for what appears to be tears uh, uh, by um, this king to soften their hearts and say this man must fear Allah he loves prayer he loves Quran and forget all his crimes all his transgressions all the uh, corruption uh, and he, he ha is part of this is what uh, explains the reason many uh, of the sects of this nation uh, how they adhere to what they call the successors us Shia are sometimes surprised we say our imams peace be upon them uh, of them the, uh, our imam al Kalim who is this gathering for this day they were pure individuals there is nothing on them and there were those who were unjust to them and unjust to the nation with them and committed what is known and written in history and mentioned and reported there that no one denies and no one rejects so how come some of this nation still respect those people one of them is Harun al-Abbasi may Allah damn him is there anyone in this nation uh, rejects that Harun imprisoned Musa ibn Ja'far peace be upon him no no one does anyone in this nation rejects that all the tragedies that happened uh, to Musa ibn Ja'far peace be upon them and his uh, family and the Alawis uh, by uh, on the hands of Harun and his regime no one denied that so why do we see people until this very day if the name of Harun is mentioned and we don't say the name of Abu Bakr and Umar but the name of Harun they said may Allah be pleased with him what is the reason behind this? Sometimes we think when when they say Abu Bakr uh, and uh, maybe they are mistaken and incorrect in their assumptions and it could be that they are deceived uh, same with Umar but with Harun who is the man of thousand nights who is known for his uh, acts and his uh, massacres known in history and the many crimes he's committed the uh, answer is this those feeble minded people they don't look at Harun as we look at him ourselves they don't look at him from our own angle they look at him from a different angle entirely and this angle is uh, the following in the book Mawrid al-Latafa uh, by Ibn Taghri Bardi volume 1 uh, page 134 he said Mansur ibn Ammar said, I have not seen one with his eyes shedding so many tears for remembrance of Allah, but three, Fulayl ibn Iyad, Al Rashid Harun, and another man. This man is saying, I testify that Harun the Abbasi that he calls a Rashid was one of those one of the most uh, one of the th only three whenever Allah has mentioned 
their eyes water and their tears uh, would shed. The man that killed your Imam, this man himself, if you go back in time, when someone reads Quran, you'll see him crying, uh, his tears fill in his beard. That image. Does it not affect the hearts of people seeing it? In Tariq al-Islam by Dhabi, volume 13, page 229, it was reported by some of the companions of Rashid that the Rashid uh, used to pray uh, during the day more than a uh, hundred rakas not leaving those prayers he's done but for a necessity this tyrant used to pray a hundred rakats every day who would do that even some might say this was an exaggeration uh, political uh, propaganda maybe perhaps but this site this claim uh, it must have been acted at some times. He must show some of his uh, followers and some of his uh, people around him that he used to play many, many uh, uh, a day. Would this not affect the peop people's hearts? That is the question. That is what requires uh, investigation. If we can solve this problem, we can solve many things, not just uh, how people of the past are seen but also the people of the present or the men of the present you'll see Ali Khamenei in the gatherings of Ahl al-Bayt the assemblies majalis. you see him crying until his face becomes red uh, as a sign of uh, excessively crying and you might see his tears as well this picture affects people it's uh, deceitful and it deceives people as it has deceived many uh, those who read about Harun and seen him uh, do these things as well. And he's saying that he's saying he would uh, follow the footsteps of his uh, grandfather Abu Ja'far al Mansur. May Allah damn uh, Except in being uh, thrifty and also uh, very tight-handed. He was known as Dawaniqi. He was not generous. But Harun was very generous. Uh, that's how it was known about him. He spends great wealth. But we will also know he used to uh, give away his wealth or the wealth to whom? Muawiyah ibn al-Dharir, one of the scholars and preachers of the Bakris said I whenever I used to uh, mention the Prophet of Allah blessings and peace be upon him until uh, the uh, Rashid as he uh, called him would say may Allah bless my Lord my master this also affects people they will also see people will, when they see this they say this Man truly loves the Messenger of Allah. As soon as someone mentions the name of the Messenger of Allah, he would shout, saying, May Allah bless my master. And when I narrate things of the Messenger uh, to him, when uh, I wish I would have uh, fought for the sake of Allah until I uh, died, then lived again then died he's saying that I told uh, Muharun with the narrations of the messenger of Allah blessings of pe uh, blessings of Allah be upon him and because of how much love he had for the messenger of Allah he had started crying until he uh, uh, was grieving so uh, and suffering from it and this is the uh, situation of the uh, tyrants. This is their appearance. Shedding tears and appearing humble 
uh, to Allah, praying uh, long prayers. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, for example, a tyrant of Bani Umayyad, who was known as the pigeon of the masjid, the pigeon of the mosque. But why? Because he was known that he would stand when he's praying. He would stand for such a long time that some of the pigeons of the mosque would fly and uh, stand on his head. He's in the masjid praying 24-7. That is the... Uh, that is the uh, case with the tyrants. You see the side of them. If they depend uh, on a religious principle to rule, religious or ethical one to rule. But on the other uh, hand, uh, their other side, you see them, one of the greatest or the worst uh, tyrants and uh, butchers they want to show that they are religiously strict uh, from one side and on the other side they do what they will they kill they commit sins and great injustice to humanity and they use that first side of them as a cover-up to deceive people with so Ibn al-Adim says in his book, Bughiyat uh, al-Talab, and it's a book of, of the books of history in volume 4, page 1785, said Rashid, one of the most people who would uh, shed the most tears when uh, hearing uh, things of Mawadha, or advice, but in moments of anger, he turn, transforms into another person. When he asks someone like Fulal ibn Iyad to come and give him instructions and advice, Harun, he used to invite this man and say to him, I wish your advice, a religious advice. And this man would have given him he gives him the first advice so he starts to cry so much that he would faint then he would wake up they wake him up he would give him the then he would ask him the man to give him another advice he would give him the advice he would cry and cry until he faints then he they wake him up again and he says, asks again, give me another advice. And when he hears the man's advice, he starts crying and then fainting again. And then when they wake him up again, he tells them to bring 10,000 dirhams, give them to this man. Use them to strengthen yourself in the worship of Allah. But is it necessary for someone to get 10,000 dirhams to strengthen their worship of Allah? Fulayl and his likes, what we call the ministers or the instructors of the sultans. Sultans, kings, want someone to pray for them, want to read Quran for them, to give them advice. So they deceive people's uh, emotional or religious emotions. He wants Quran and after uh, to do sins. He wants to put two personalities together. A personality dis disorder. He wants two things at once. He used to cry uh, when given advice and one of the most violent, one of the most unjust when he is angry and when he is uh, irritated. Always uh, on his tongue there was the statement, uh, the butcher take off his head. 
If he truly had sincerity in his heart to Allah and he had fear of Allah in his heart, would he have so easily killed people? And uh, much of what we know as sins and uh, uh, such things as well. Of one, one of his uh, acts in this book, Rashid had um, two thousands of female uh, slaves. Three hundred of them were singers, and they would uh, uh, play the uh, musical instruments for him. Just three hundred, only for singing. And it says one day he was nervous. And one of his uh, gatherings uh, he's had with his singers and likes, he gave away six million dirhams. And another day also, and he appointed uh, the singer that he liked the voice of and uh, he at appointed him as the wali of uh, Masr, as the ruler of Egypt. And uh, today's people are the sons of the people of the past. You as a Muslim, you must be uh, intelligent, you must have an a much more open mind and investigate. Stop being deceived by these images. These deceitful images. Until when will they continue to trick you with a personality that is not true, a fake one? If you say that no one, none of us is an infallible, so yes, the Rashid had this very negative side of him, a sinful person, but at the same time, he would pray a hundred rak'at, recite the Qur'an, cry when he re uh, listens to advice, and he greatly loved the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him. When he would read, when he would hear his uh, name, he would say, may Allah bless my master. So what? If he was truly sincere, then advice would have really worked on him. But it was not really advice. Those who came to him with advice, they only did so so they get paid. Just like uh, the problems we face in our time. There are questions on the tongues of many of the believers. They say, years and years, our societies would go to the Husseini assembly, assemblies or any other religious assemblies us uh, that the speakers of the Shia would uh, take the helm off why did we not learn anything what why did we not become better what did our problems not be solved the reason or one of the reasons is uh, brothers that advice if it was sincere and true came out of uh, the heart of a true heart an honest heart uh, through the tongue of someone who only seeks approval of, uh, of Allah, then it will affect people's hearts. It will impact them. But is, is, is this what we find ourselves in? Is it tr true that everyone who recites, everyone who uh, is speaking in the majalis, uh, the assemblies of Ahlul Bayt, and uh, advise them in matters of ethics, faith, and other things, is it, is it the thing that motivates him or drives him to do all these things is only the approval of Allah or to fill his pockets? It became a profession. It became a means to get paid by. That's why it will not impact anyone. That's why it will not influence people 
and uh, change them to become better. I do not say that the speaker has no right to be paid anything uh, to uh, help him live. But if he makes that the, his entire motive and his ambition, then his advice, uh, praise be Allah, will not even have any influence. It will enter one ear and leave the other. Those who come to the uh, assembly, they would hear uh, positive things. They would cry at the end of it and then eat and then leave. As if uh, exactly as they were. And sometimes they would even come out worse if the speaker was corrupt and teaching them things that are against the religion uh, by in the name of religion, the people will come out worse. Those who advised Harun, did they come to uh, advise him for the sake of Allah, for Dail ibn Iyad? Did not come to advise him for the sake of Allah. They, he came for the 10,000 dirham that Harun ended up giving him. So he wants to give him an advice just like any other of his uh, sitting uh, uh, sit-downs that uh, he's uh, paid the uh, uh, cost for. Uh, Harun wants him just to come and uh, make him uh, uh, cry as an act or maybe Harun did actually live a uh, personality or had a personality disorder that he actually believed what he was doing. You see some of the most wicked sinful people Sometimes uh, listening to Quran and crying and being uh, influenced by it. But at the same time, just right after, uh, he would listen to a song. And then when he's tired of the songs, he would go look for even more uh, wicked things. This is a disaster. And this is a problem that the Muslims have lived through for 1400 years. It did not only see them make uh, the wrong uh, decisions and uh, make the wrong assumptions about people like Harun uh, of people uh, of the Abbasi and the Umayyad uh, uh, dynasties this has led them to even mistakenly see and uh, uh, analyze people of the first age, if we can call them that, like Abu Bakr and Umar. They read history, and what do they see in history? They see many pages that, uh, at face value, seem extremely positive about Abu Bakr and Umar. That Abu Bakr used to cry when he re recites the Quran, when he prays, that when he saw would cry so much that Aisha says, we used to, uh, uh, from his, would uh, smell from his mouth, uh, the smell of burnt meat. Uh, that metaphor means his insides or his heart is uh, in such uh, pain that it feels like it was burning his insides. It was obvious uh, exaggerations by Aisha. And also that Umar ibn al-Khattab, on the uh, pulpit, he would uh, cry so much that it would have tremors. And these made up things. People will read th these things in history and that will uh, deceive them. Uh, that will influence them. They would take these pages, these sites, and then ignore all the other uh, things of, uh, about these individuals in history. The tyranny of Abu Bakr uh, against Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, peace be upon her, is not even looked at. And when it is looked at, it is justified. And if there is no justification, they would just say it was a mistake. May Allah forgive him. So what? He has many good deeds. He has some sins or some mistakes, but they are like a drop in the ocean of his good deeds. This is an old principle that some have that made them attached to Abu Bakr, made them attached to Umar. And this principle 
uh, has been inherited by the people of our time so made them also attached to uh, uh, deviants and tyrants till they were misled and uh, misled others and that caused divisions and sects in Islam uh, in reality Islam is one it has no divisions, no sects, and no uh, paths other, uh, other than one. Our purified Imams, peace be upon them, used to resist this and strive as much as they could to uh, advise the nation, to uh, educate the nation, no matter how difficult the period was. Imam al kadhim peace be upon him, was one of them. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. Just imagine that this Imam, and I've mentioned to you this story before. While he was in prison, uh, jailed, he would not stop uh, in his duty to uh, educate the masses, educate the nation. Ali ibn Suwayd al sai was one of the companions of uh, trustworthy companions of the Imam, uh, Imam's peace be upon him. As he said in the book of Kafi Sharif, he said, I wrote to Imam Musa ibn Jafar, peace be upon him, while he was uh, imprisoned, to ask him about uh, certain things, uh, rulings. And the Imam responded to me. In a piece of paper and he responded to all my questions a very long response uh, mentioned in Kafi Sharif that the Imam peace be upon him even while in his condition he did not uh, stop doing his duty one of the things he was asked about Imam peace be upon him that the Shari religious stance of every Muslim uh, against or versus Abu Bakr and Umar. How do you see, how do you judge Ahl al-Bayt? How do you judge Abu Bakr and Umar? What did the Imam, peace be upon him, respond to him saying? He gave him an answer uh, that I will uh, take what uh, uh, is required for our uh, research of this night. He said they were They were deceivers. They were deceivers, doubtful, hypocrites, until they passed away to where they will be disgraced in for all eternity. The first attribute that the Imam Qadim, peace be upon him, has given to those two tyrants, he said of them, they were deceivers. They deceived people. If the nation, from the very first day, from the, on Saqifah, they would, were aware of the uh, the seat of Abu Bakr and Umar, Harun and his likes would not have come. If they saw the acts of Abu Bakr and Umar, uh, their acts of crying and appearance of being religious was entirely deceitful and lies, fabricated. Bani Umayyad wouldn't have come to us, Bani Al-Abbas, even until our uh, day, uh, until we have people like al Saud. That is the reason. Uh, our Imam, peace be upon him, used to resist this. He clarified this truth. Despite his uh, condition, difficult conditions, despite his uh, great pain and the oppression he was uh, feeling, seeing, he did not stop in his duty to expose these two individuals or these personalities for the hypocrites that they were. That is why Harun uh, resented him and loathed him. And the people of Harun, the followers of Harun, and those who came after, uh, following their footsteps. 
I have reported to you uh, in the past uh, some reports of the Shia of Iraq and uh, Shia of Baghdad specifically. These reports are in the history books. The opposers agree with them as do uh, the uh, Shia. Uh, pages of history we consider as uh, great moments of glory and bravery. One of it is that the Shia of ba uh, Baghdad even when they were oppressed by the uh, uh, tyrant Abbasi uh, regime, when someone would pass through Karkh and it was a majority uh, Shia uh, population, if someone would pass through Karkh and praised Abu Bakr, Umar or Aisha, they would attack him not allowing him to speak in our home we will not allow you to praise these people even if this was uh, uh, even if this man who praised uh, Abu Bakr and Umar was uh, an official government official such as a uh, Pol um, security uh, individual like the army or such if he would pass through and uh, trying to intimidate the Shia uh, saying things like praising Umar and Abu Bakr people would throw stones at them and those people then became in, uh, or uh, grabbed seats of uh, power they would uh, bring many groups and they would attack uh, this area and they would kill so many of the Shia in, in, in that town. Despite that, the Shia would still not back down. They would still not allow anyone to uh, come to their home and praise the enemies of Ahlul Bayt in their presence, in their streets, in their home. They saw this uh, a great shame. So what happened to you now, the Shia of Iraq? How did you transform so much like this? Tell me, this is your history. This is Baghdad in the past. We close our eyes. We open it today. And we see in Baghdad praise to the tyrants, the oppressors, the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and glorifying and, and turning them into symbols until they call streets and places after their names in Baghdad and even uh, making statues for these tyrants. We were in a certain day, we did not allow a person to pass through our town or our home and praise these tyrants. But in our day, we uh, carve their names uh, on, the, our, uh, on our streets and our homes and towns and establish statues for them. The street of Rashid and the area of Mansur and in it there's a statue as well. This is great shame. What has happened to us? How did we transform and change so much? How we were and how are we now? Unfortunately, this is how things are at the moment. Those past Shia, the Shia of Iraq, the Shia of Baghdad, uh, are those who inherited this attribute. They inherited this attribute from their imams and their uh, great scholars. Every group uh, is a reflection of whom they follow. Every nation 
is translating what their uh, leaders uh, are uh, or represent. For example, this Rafadi approach, this uh, honorable uh, attribute, they inherited this from their Imams, peace be upon them, and especially their Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, peace be upon them, because he was the symbol of the Shia in Baghdad. He was the Imam of Rafidah. This is why the uh, opposing regime and their followers and tales in general they loathed the Imam peace be upon him Musa ibn Ja'far and his uh, Shia in Baghdad so they used to assault them and harm them many times over this many sectarian uh, events, sectarian violence that is known in history when someone reads through in history and sees the history of Iraq might laugh at this dip uh, laughable diplomatic uh, words that we hear uh, in this day and age on the tongues of the politicians and their likes people of the third world, uh, third world, uh, world and the fourth world of the traitorous uh, speakers saying that we never saw uh, separation in Iraq, segregation. There was no difference between Shia and Sun Sunni, uh, so-called Sunni. Iraq was always one. We were always brothers. It's as if the history of Iraq until this very day was a great example of unity and love and passion and agreement with all sorts of uh, sects and religions. Do you, you lie to whom? This is uh, history. When we read history, we cannot even find a single period in the history of Iraq that did not include sectarian violence on uh, some level. And the uh, and the transgressors are always known. The transgression always comes from, from the opposition. So, you are deceiving who? This is the history of Iraq. How many times during that time, more than a thousand years ago, not now, how many times uh, the uh, sacred shrine of the uh, Imam al-Kadhim, peace be upon him, was defiled. How many times was it, was it burnt? How many times they killed the followers, the Shia, that took safeguard in, in the shrine? Or took refuge in the shrine. Many times this happened, for many years. They instigated sectarianism that would not have uh, uh, come down. But what was their motive behind all this? This matter? That those Shia do not accept their Imams, the Imams of the Bakris, the opposers, and they inherited this attribute uh, from their Imams. Ahl al Bayt, peace be upon them. Especially Musa ibn Jafar. Even those of uh, the opposers do not dare to uh, accuse uh, saying that you are raising generations to insult the so-called companions. Even they would feel a little doubtful. That's what they would be uh, uh, hateful like this and resent the Shia and do these acts. Uh, as an example, uh, in here, in the book Mirat al Zaman, Sibt ibn al Jawzi, it's a historic book, volume 7, page 19, uh, we read this uh, text. It says, in uh, Mustahil Rabi al Akhar, 
Zuhairi and Ibn al Yadan or Ibn al Badan and a group of people of Basra and Harbiya. These areas uh, of Baghdad that were majority Bakris said a group of them, uh, including the ones he named. They uh, left their areas, uh, homes in Baghdad, uh, going forward to the uh, shrine of Musa ibn Jafar. And they were reciting poems, make, uh, making um, chants, uh, saying or encouraging themselves and others to do what? To burn the shrine of uh, Imam al kazim peace be upon him. They succeeded in that. And what else did they do? And they transformed the, the graves there uh, despite this being a uh, sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, to make them level on the floor uh, in terms of graves, but the opposers, and they say that clearly uh, in opposition of the Shia, we do not follow the sunnah of the leveling uh, of the graves, we uh, build them in an arch, as an arch, like uh, the arch of. Uh, that is on top of the uh, camel's back they defiled the graves like this and they did everything Sabt ibn Jawzi says that and the Alawis uh, whether uh, inherit, uh, followers or descendants and only few left there and one of the poems the poems that the uh, enemies were reciting you who set fire to this shrine your hands will be blessed for what you have done you have purified a land that its entire people are disbelievers no one remembers Allah in it and no one uh, prays in the, mes mes uh, in the Masajid they are innovators that adhere to this uh, rafth and so on and so forth until it said after it said they killed uh, stole and uh, burnt they had another another poem in it celebrating their victory after the massacre and that terrible event saying let's let them count how many of them we have killed of the Shia Rafida and they call the shrine of the Imamain Kalamain, peace be upon them, the abandoned uh, shrine. People were crying for what they've seen was or saw what was uh, happening to the shrines of the Imams. What did they call this? They called it They called this crying urination Go ask them what we have done The crimes, oh, what we have done the, How many of them we have killed 
and the place that is uh, abandoned. They hated us for this reason because we insult or we they resent the uh, so-called companions. This is why they love us. And it will be clarified more. For their insults to the uh, companions. And let us continue what Sibt ibn Jawzi has said. And uh, on the 8th of Rabi'i al-Akhira, those uh, that we have mentioned came back to the shrine and uh, defiled the grave and one of the men stood on the shrine of the imam on top of it and said uh, O Musa ibn Ja'far if you loved Abba Bakr and Umar May Allah bless your soul. But if you hated them, and he mentioned the curse, and Allah forbid, so he said, if you hated them, may Allah curse you. And that is why he was standing atop the grave of the uh, Imam, peace be upon him. Have you ever heard this? Incident? Have you ever known about it? We must not read our modern history without first analyzing the past, reading the past. All these episodes must be linked because they explain all the incidents, all the events, the reasons behind them, how they came to be. This was not birth today. A liar is that the sectarian problems we suffer now is birthed because of ISIS or Western occupation that uh, created the Wahhabi movement. It's a lie. At that time, there was no America, no Britain. There was no Wahhabi movement. There was no Al Saud regime. Then when did they, uh, uh, or where did they bring this uh, great hate towards us? They cannot live in peace with others. They do not want to live peacefully with others. There is another in Baghdad, and they are majority. They say that we do not accept Abu Bakr and Umar. And we have narrations by our imams against them. This is our imam, Musa ibn Ja'far. That is his uh, shrine. He taught us that Abu Bakr and uh, Umar were deceitful, hypocrites, and they had doubt. That is what we believe in. We follow the imams, peace be upon them, in, in these matters. So the opposers cannot accept that. They cannot live with it. As, as simple as that. They want to force us to accept these uh, personalities, these individuals. We want our freedom of speech. They do not accept. We uh, ask for our uh, freedom of belief. They do not accept. They have this feeling of superiority, thinking they are uh, worth more, have more value. They want everything to be theirs. And they want you as a Shi'i to not have a right to express what you believe in 
to have an opinion, your tongue must be cut off and your head must roll. We will even defile your shrines. We will destroy them. We will burn them. The incident of the attack on the uh, shrines of the Imam al and peace be upon them, is the daughter of this incident that happened in the 4th century. Those are the descendants of those uh, people. The same hate. And in between these events, uh, these incidents, was uh, demolition of the shrines of the Imam of Baqi' peace be upon them. If you give the uh, opposers the freedom, they will destroy all the shrines of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And you will see one of them uh, would s step over these graves and say the same things. This man who said these things with his uh, impure uh, foot, he set his, uh, was over, uh, stepped over the grave of the uh, Imam and saying to him, if you love uh, Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah bless you. And if you don't, may Allah damn you. Allah forbid. Because he has doubt. But why? Because his scholars say to them, uh, no, the Imams, uh, the 12 Im Imams do not hate Abu Bakr and Umar. Uh, because that is the invention of their followers. But he remains doubtful. He's not convinced. When we see some of the Ahnaf, for example, uh, having a stance and an opinion, does not uh, uh, that not represent what Abu Hanifa believed in? In, in? in most cases, yes. Those are his followers and they adhere to him. So they would know his, his stance and they would follow it. Same when we speak about Maliki. When the, his followers have a certain stance, we say that they must have inherited this from their imam. And so on and so forth with all the sects of uh, the uh, Bakri, uh, Bakris. So no doubt the Shias, their stance the, uh, that is against Abu Bakr and Umar, their likes, uh, it must have been inherited by their imams, peace be upon them, uh, from their imams. So the opposer cannot be convinced that the Imams, peace be upon them, did not raise their Shia uh, in what they call is uh, the insults to the companions and to have disdain towards them. It must be that they uh, learned this from their Imams. Sabt ibn Jawzi says, and another you know, known as Ibn Fahd, and he started running uh, on top of the uh, grave of Musa ibn Ja'far, peace be upon him, an insult, a transgression, uh, defiling the grave. And it is said his uh, foot were swollen and that uh, the, uh, uh, the doctor uh, treated them. And then Zuhairi, the uh, leader of this gang that went to do all these acts, may Allah curse them, Zuhairi took a silver ball that was near the head of the Imam that would be perfume in it and he said this ball uh, is used for food and he took it and saying to Musa and those who the Rawafud say that you hear people's speech and you respond uh, to uh, those who uh, speak to you and you could not prevent me from what I've done look at this ignorant stand, uh, position because uh, you did this uh, great crime that means now you uh, prove that the Imam Musa ibn Ja'far peace be upon him has no value in the, in the eyes of Allah Allah is being patient with you and giving you room to do these crimes to uh, show how uh, or how much um, uh, how shameful you are. For example, Kaaba. How many times the Kaaba was defiled? Uh, the black stone was stolen. 
uh, was uh, assaulted by catapults. So what? Not every time the miracles of Allah will uh, intervene. Not every time the birds of Ababil would get involved. Not every time. According to the wisdom of Allah, and sometimes, in some places, Allah will uh, show uh, his miracles, but sometimes he will not. So these crimes will be written down and mentioned in the future. Or Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, blessings be upon him, raised his Shia even when he was imprisoned to follow the correct uh, Rafali approach. These things and their likes are what made Harun al Abbasi, may Allah curse him. Uh, to uh, order the arrest of the imam and then uh, uh, kill him. What was his reason? His reasons, his justification was the same as every regime that is against us today. Every group that is against us. They have the same excuse. They have the same logic. So we can call all of them, whether they were governments, whether they were, they were movements, we say, uh, we call them all the Haruni Abbasi uh, ideology. Well, what is this logic I want you to listen to and uh, pay attention to? This logic uh, was in a, mentioned in a narration by Saduq in his famous book Iyun Akhbar al Rida. Blessings be upon him. Volume 1, uh, page 30, uh, 73 of Ibrahim ibn, Bila, ibn Bilad who said Ya'qub ibn Dawood uh, told me Ya'qub ibn Dawood seems uh, as though that he was one of those who work in, uh, in the government of the Abbasis. But he became a Shia. Allah has guided him. So he became like Ali ibn Yaqtin, may Allah bless his soul, who was a minister of Harun, but he was a Shia and he was uh, sincere, truthful, loyal to the Imam, peace be upon him, Ya'qub ibn Dawood, uh, told me that he accepted Imama. So I came to him in the night of the arrest of the Imam, peace be upon him. Uh, during the night, so on the night that, on the next morning, the Imam would have been arrested in. He said, I visited him and he said to me, I was with the minister, Yahya ibn Khalid, the other minister of Harun. And he told me that he heard the Rashid say near the grave of the Messenger of Allah, shrine of the Messenger of Allah, as if he was speaking to him directly. This is a secret testimony. This minister was beside Harun uh, in the shrine of the messenger near his grave. And Harun was speaking to the messenger of Allah, blessings be upon him, saying to him, I am. I seek your forgiveness for a, th a matter that I've decided on. Be I want to take Musa ibn Ja'far and imprison him because I am afraid that he would cause in your nation a great war that would shed their blood. He comes seeking forgiveness from the Messenger of Allah, saying, I will imprison your son, Musa ibn Ja'far, peace be upon Peace be upon them. But what is his justification? 
I am afraid that he would cause disunity in your nation and he would shed their blood because of it. Ask yourself, if the Imam, Imam al-Kadhim, peace be upon him, did not write to Ali ibn Suwaid, Ali ibn Suwaid that Abu Bakr were not uh, liars, deceitful. If the Imam did not do this, the Imams before and after, they had no statements in it, any rejection or refusal of uh, Abu Bakr or Umar. Would the Shia have anything against those uh, individuals? No. Would there have been any conflict between the two uh, sects? No. People would have gotten along. By why did the Imams uh, did not do that? They did not because that would have meant the massacre of the truth. Abu Bakr and Umar, there would have been a matter of agreement in the entire nation and people would have followed them for eternity and that would have meant the destruction of the faith of the uh, religion of Muhammad peace be upon him things like the prayer of tara taraweeh would turn into a sunnah and level in the grave would become uh, innovation it is a complete uh, demolition of the faith. What is important is to be able to filter so that we do not uh, follow the deceivers, the hypocrites, and those who would mislead us because of a few tears they shed here and there. I seek your for forgiveness for a matter I'm about to do. I want to uh, take Musa ibn Ja'far and imprison him because I'm afraid that he would uh, cause a great war in your nation that would shed the bloods of the Muslims. And the narrator said, uh, I thought he will take him tomorrow, Harun. May Allah damn him, would take Musa ibn Ja'far on, uh, on the next morning. And when it was morning, he sent to him Fadl ibn al-Rabi, his minister, while uh, the Imam was praying. In the uh, shrine of the, his grandfather, and there he ordered the arrest of the Imam and prison. They did not even allow him to continue his prayer. They uh, broke his prayer, they dragged him, and he used to say uh, to you, uh, the Messenger of Allah, I uh, protest, Allah, you know that I always ask you that I will have time to worship you, and now you have given me this chance, and I praise you, Allah. This is when the tragedy of Musa ibn Jafar started.